Hello, this is Jason T. Ingram. The date today is February 10th, 2017, and I'm doing a video log about getting my career back in music and doing it full time. I taught about 15 years ago. I did this on and off for about five, almost 10 years, uh, full time for a while, um, doing uh, gigs and recording albums for people, but mostly I was teaching uh, classroom, and then I got the most amount of money doing private lessons. So um, it's been over 10 years since I've actually had a job. Before that, I was working in factories and warehouses trying to support myself when I went through straight camp. I'm a conversion therapy survivor, so I went through five years of programs doing anti-gay bullshit and people that claim to do mental health work. And, uh, of course, they do more harm than good. So I'm thank God I got out of that and I survived. So now I'm dealing with lots of trauma and dealing with having a hard time working with others, working with authority, um, basically just coping day to day. So my coping skills are very, very vast, I could say. But what helped me was the fact that I acclimated. So, you know, once or twice a year, I would try a new practice. If it worked, I would do it. If it didn't work, I, I would maybe try a little more of it or tweak it a little bit until I found something that worked. So over the last decade or so, I found a lot of things that work, and I've gotten into some bad habits as well. And at the same time, um, I've stayed out of the mental hospital now for, I haven't been institutionalized since probably early 09. And then I've only actually been under a lockdown uh, mental health that was 10 years ago. In fact, last week it'll be 10 years, so I've come a long way, but at the same time, I still am not functioning very well at all. Sometimes the littlest things can make things very difficult. I was going through my vinyls today because uh, part of my happy therapy was I bought myself a turntable from the Salvation Army, which was funny because... Uh, it was broken, and they wanted to charge me full price for it. And uh, I said, well, it's broken, it's broken. And then I said, I fixed it, I fixed it. <laughs> and I said, well, we'll still charge you full price. <laughs> but anyways, I was looking for some vinyls today, and there was one particular one that I had bought on Amazon, and I haven't even gotten a chance to hear it yet, because I didn't hook up my new turntable for, you know, three or four months or so. Oh! Good, I found my credit card. <laughs> I was ordering some classes. Some of these business classes that I'm taking downtown are just awesome. So I have to put my credit card number in in order to do that. They have business seminars at Mercy Corps. And uh, this week I went to one on accounting. And it was funny. If you see a guy who's trying to teach, who's never taught, who's an accountant, it was just, it was adorable. Very, very nice class. And then the other one last week was with an attorney, and this was like such a typical attorney, you know. <laughs> so, right now, I am organizing my spaghetti here. This is looking a lot better than it did when I started my video log today. I have a gig tonight, so I have about another hour or so to set up. Usually, I only give myself maybe... 30 to 60 minutes to actually set up for a gig. So I'm trying to be nicer to myself and give myself at least a couple hours. So it's because I get so frustrated, I put it off till the last minute, which is, it's just really counterproductive when you, you know, when you're scared of something, putting it off is the last thing you want to do because it only makes it worse, you know, getting it done. But the problem is, is starting a project that you know you've got a deadline and you start the project and suddenly it gets frustrating and you're like oh my god I have to do this so quick and I can't do it and your brain just stops functioning so that's I think one of the reasons why a lot of us procrastinate so much is just because it's not because we want to put it off it's not because it's not going to take long it's just because we know we have to do it and there's something in our brain that says, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this. And then it comes down to looking at the clock and say, well, fuck, I have to do this, I have to do this now. And then you end up doing a really bad job at something. So 
procrastination is definitely one of the symptoms of living with chronic depression and anxiety. So it makes it really hard to run a small business when you're living with stuff like this. At the same time, folks that have lived with trauma and the kind of shit that I've lived with, um, it's a lot better to be an entrepreneur because I can set my own schedule. You know, if I'm having a day where I've just suffered several days of panic attacks and I need to take a self-care day suddenly, I have the luxury of doing that most of the time unless I'm, you know, touring or something like that. And I try not to tour anymore. And if I do some kind of event out of state, I only do one or two gigs and that's it. And I did one five years ago out of state and it fucked me up so bad. I went into a month depression. Here it was summer and I couldn't hardly function. I stayed home for like pretty much that whole month. And so then I haven't even flown for a couple years. I just don't trust myself with a lot of stressful activities. So I have a quiz here, and this is a quiz about my career, about my background. Which is my real job that I actually had? One, painting black lines on steaks for Denny's menus, right? You know when you open up the Denny's menu and they have chicken fried steak and steak and eggs and you see this beautiful steak and it's got these perfect black lines on it. So was that my job painting black lines on meat for food photography? Two, a job demonstrating toilet paper being at a retail or wholesale establishment and doing a demonstration of a certain brand of toilet paper. That's job number two. Job number three, real easy. Writing poems for greeting cards. And I will tell you that in less than three minutes. This is my volume pedal I got in Anchorage, Alaska from a gift card at Mammoth Music to my funny friend that I played music with who I just adored. And I remember I had a $25 gift card for my birthday in 2002, I'm pretty sure. And that was $25 on sale and I didn't use it for years. And then I had another volume pedal that broke and another one. Oh, that's, actually, that's a control pedal. This here, it doesn't actually have a signal going in and out of it that's audio. This is purely data. So this one I use for my pedal wah sounds, like a wah-wah pedal on a guitar. And I use that for keyboard sounds, and it's cool. And this one here is a rip-off adapter that I'm using my iPad tonight. So I'm doing some old-school MIDI sequencing type stuff that I got on a free app. And I'm jazz. We haven't played with my band, Dialectic Flowers, for a long time. And I think I'm getting some really cool gigs. I've contacted some mental health nonprofits to have our band play, and a couple of outdoor festivals, and maybe an... I don't. I can't say it at this point. It's really cool, though. It's a, it's a visual performance art group that I adore. That's very talented, and I think our band is good enough now to do that. Our band is magical. We had some um, some jams yesterday and recorded about twelve, uh, sixteen minutes worth of music, and it's great. The magic is just wonderful. We play the music. Sometimes the instruments work, <laughs> sometimes the synergy works, the communication works, and it's just wonderful to be doing music that I love as much as I love, you know, having done church music, and I've been doing, the last six years, I've been doing stoner rock. It's really great to be doing this wonderful European-inspired music, so. And here, I got my camera tonight because I have a photographer that should be coming too, and my art director, who's a peer and a dear friend of mine. And um, so there are some wonderful women, and I think a couple guys that have helped us. <laughs> Usually the guys are on stage, and my art team were kind of running around. Okay, so I'm blabbing, so here's the answer. I demonstrated Chelsea brand toilet paper when I worked for warehouse demo services that contracted at Costco Warehouses in Anchorage, Alaska in 1994.